What this little lady here is doing, and these little ladies, that gentleman, that lady, is what will soon be happening with all of our little bantams. So, this is the new bantam house. Um, it is, uh, it's eight by 16, and they used to be in the dog kennel, which is 10 by 10. So we upgraded to this uh, two months ago, maybe three, I'm not quite sure, I'd have to go back. But um, it's bigger, it's roomier, um, but it's still awfully tight, especially given the ratio of roosters to uh, hens that we have in there. So uh, I very quickly realized that I needed to give them more room. And uh, I've spoken about this before, but uh, we collect and sell the Bantam eggs. Um, they're really cute. We market them for uh, children, but um, pretty much anybody likes them. Um, we're working on getting the colors a bit more diverse. Right now we mostly have cream and uh, white, but um, and we sell them for $3 a dozen. But um, I want them to have that pastured experience. You know, I don't want them to just eat um, feed. And of course we give them sunflower seeds and non-GMO corn and non-GMO wheat. And um, we have a non-GMO feed that we also give them, but uh, that's not enough. You know, I want them to have access to everything that the other birds have out there on pasture, but they need safety because they're little and they won't stay inside the electric fencing. Um, well, that's not true. They, they will and they can, but I just always feel like they're vulnerable. Early on, we had them integrated with the main flocks, which are out there. But um, I wound up separating them because the little hens were being uh, mounted quite vigorously by, you know, an adult-sized rooster. Which, uh, not you, Flops. You have other problems, but not that. But, um, so I decided, you know, to kind of keep them in their own pen, and then that grew into this. And now what I'm working on is closing in this whole uh, northwest corner of the garden for them. And I've got, uh, I've already got some infrastructure in place. The brooder is here and it's going to stay here because uh, it's actually really well positioned, I think. It's got uh, perfect southern exposure in the winter when I'm brooding chicks and I need as much heat as I can get. The leaves are off this tree and it's um, getting all the light it can and I've got really thick insulation in the walls um, and two layers of uh, plastic plus the uh, corrugated sheeting to really make it quite warm in there. Um, so no worries about that, but that's probably always going to stay here. The old brooder I'm going to disassemble and actually turn this whole corner into the new ICU ward because I just, I need, I need more. Um, three at a time is, is just not cutting it. Um, so I'm going to work on that and of course close this in, but this whole area here uh, is going to be the new Bantam Run and I've got a ton of bare root trees back here to plant. I've got grapes and currants, <coughs> excuse me, and um, of course they already have an apple tree. Um, I've got some cane fruits and blueberries and such to put in here, um, but uh, the idea is that they will have you know, lots of room to forage and I can throw seed on the ground and get some other things kind of going um, so that they can have a rich and rewarding experience and not necessarily be pastured, but have a really premium uh, chicken run. So that's the goal with them. Um, these are the grow out pins and I've talked about them before. There's a third one that's going to go where my saw horses are. But these are for when chicks come out of the brooder at about six to eight weeks and we start <laughs> hardening them off. It's kind of like with plants, you know, we let them get used to the outdoors once they're fully feathered. Um, gives them more room than just a little brooder box and um, allows them to see and be seen by the other birds, kind of helps them socialize. Um, we had an attack the uh, first night that I put them in here and I lost um, three chicks, um, pretty tragically. Um, and I will regret that for a long time, um, but uh, since I added the additional flange around here, which I should have done in the first place, everybody's fine. Um, but another good thing about having the grow out pins here is that if somebody gets out, I don't have to chase them all over creation. They're just going to be inside this fenced in area, which is also the same thing with if any chicks manage to work their way out and hop out the brooder door by accident, 
again, they've only got so many places they can go and they're relatively safe. They can't run into the honeysuckle patch or the briar patch or something. And then I've, I've really got a problem on my hands. So um, we're working on this. Uh, I've got all the frames built. Um, I have to frame in a couple doors inside those frames, but the frames are built. I've got four left. I'm pretty sure I need one, two, three, and this is closed. And then one more for the back. Uh, I've just used standard two by four by eights. Um, I try to make everything uh, divisible by, you know, two, four, six, eight. Um, it just makes everything easier. And one reason that I put the Bantam house up here is because it's near the main garden. So I will see them uh, every day and be around quite often in the event that there's a problem. Uh, the Bantams are, you know, are pretty much carefree, but you know, if a snake or something is gonna come in here during the day, they're not as able to protect and defend themselves as say uh, a standard chicken. So uh, since I'll be doing most of my work up here, I'll be pretty much near them. I'm gonna start espaliering larger um, fruit trees out here on the outside of this. Um, I've got a, a really large fruit collection, fruit tree collection at my uh, home in town that I'll be moving out here little by little. Uh, over the next year. Um, I kind of miss my window here for transplanting them when dormant, so uh, most of this is going to happen in the fall. But um, anyhow, it's going to be a pretty great run, and it'll be right next to the flower cutting garden, and um, it's going to be a good spot for them. So I'm pretty excited. I know they're excited. They see it being built, being built not fast enough, I'm sure, for them. Um, but uh, they're super sweet, and um, they deserve a really high quality of life, and uh, that's what I want to provide for them and that will also help them uh, provide really high quality excellent eggs for our customers uh, which is also really important and um, you know they can just live a good chicken life and express their chickenness. Hi Angelo! These, uh, these uh, juveniles, well they're, they look like they're adults at this point but these birds are just waiting to be integrated into the grow out pen, uh, not the grow out pens, into the actual flocks. Um, and I want to do that on a day when I don't have to travel uh, at all during the day so that I can be here pretty much the entire day to watch when every, you know, in case anybody jumps out, I can put them back in, I can look out for excessive bullying. These uh, beautiful uh, black copper moran uh, roos uh, are going to go into the uh, rooster run, but um, I need to work on the fencing on the rooster run because I'm tired of sending lads over there putting them in the decompression chamber for seven to ten days only to have them pretty much as soon as they get out come right back over here um i need a taller fence over there so uh, and i'm going to replace the electric fence and just put up a nice six foot welded wire fence like this i've got the <clears throat> excuse me i've got the material to do it i uh, i just need the time and um so that's coming up but so there's a little update on the bantam house today uh and the bantam run uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I said, I know they are as well. So, um, I'm going to get back to work. I'm still doing morning tours on this, uh, dreary, uh, not dreary, just overcast Arbor Day. Um, it's actually a great day to plant, uh, pretty much anything, but, uh, especially trees and shrubs and perennials. And, uh, I'll be talking about that in a later video, um, for Arbor Day. So anyhow, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, that's all welcome. Please post them in the comments below. Uh, I'm also pretty active on Instagram and Facebook if you want to follow our account um, on either of those places. It's uh, at Broad Shoulders Farm. And uh, hope to see you guys there. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.